we are going to uh, discuss on the experiment to determine the specific resistance of the given wire. Actually, in this A, there are two, three wires will be given in the examination. They may give two, three wires. We have to determine specific resistivity of individual wires. Each wire is we have to take and separately calculate resistivity. Then I will explain resistivity of one wire. This is the wire given. It's actually 80 centimeter long manganese wire we have taken. It's a resistance wire. There's a difference between resistance wire and connecting wires. Connecting wires are copper wires. Its resistance is almost neglected. We don't consider the resistance into conservation while taking the readings. But resistance of this manganese, nichrome, etc., considerably high values. So we are going to calculate resistivity of this wire. So to determine the resistivity of the wire, formula is rho is a symbol. Rho is equal to R A by M. R is the resistance of this resistance wire. L is length of this wire that comes around 80 centimeter. 80 centimeter. We have to take it 0 0.8 meter. Area cross section is pi R square. Okay, first let us find out R. So this is an unknown resistance. We don't know this value. So usually that value, instead of giving R, we are giving X. X A by N. This is the formula. X is the unknown resistance of this wire, which we have to determine by this method, which is called Ohm's symbol. Okay? Then A is the area of cross section of this wire. This wire which is wound here. If you take it a straight wire, that will be around 80 centimeter long. Then a radius of the wire we can calculate using screw gauge. After this, I'll explain this how to determine radius using screw gauge. Then using the formula A is the pi r square, area can be determined. Now I will introduce each component we are using here. This system is actually called Ohm's law experiment. Okay, look here. Here, first one, this is the resistance which we are going to determine. Clear? This is the cell. This is a milliameter. Milliameter is a current measuring device. It can be ammeter also because if you are connecting two cell or three cell, current flow will be more, then you have to connect here ammeter. Here we are using 1.5 volt cell, therefore milliameter I am using. Clear? One division of this milliameter is 2 milliampere. Here 0 to 20. 10 divisions indicate 20 milliampere. So 10 division 20 milliampere means 1 division 2 milliampere. So this is the least count of this milliameter. Now let us go to voltmeter. Voltmeter, voltmeter 0 to uh, see 100 there are 10 divisions again so one division is 10 millivolt here one division is 2 milliampere in milliameter but in voltmeter millivoltmeter here okay one division is 10 millivolt clear so this is used to measure voltage across this load this is rheostat this device is a current controlling unit, current controlling device. If you take here, see here to here, a magnet wire is wound that is ending to this end. So this is just a magnet wire just wound around here. There is a metal strip here. So if you want to increase the resistance, push this to this end. Then current has to go all the way here and come out to see this strip and come out here. Then resistance is maximum. If you want to reduce the resistance, keep here, for example. Then current has to go only through here and it can enter into this copper. This is a copper block, but it's necroplated. And from here it will go out. If you want to still reduce the resistance, you have to move here. You see, there only this much a distance, it has to travel through the magnet wire and the current will enter this metal plate here and go out. So this is the purpose of rheostat, which is a current control unit. This is the diagram, rheostat, right? If you move this towards here, resistance is less. Move towards that, resistance is more. So that will decrease the current in the circuit. Clear? This is a key. As we know, this is a switch. If you open, current will not flow. If you close, current can flow. 
So these are the main components of this apparatus. So here, first we are connecting cell. First look at the circuit diagram here. This is the positive determinant of the cell, longer line, negative determinant. From there, first we make a series connection. Series connection means one after another. So always when you do experiment, make sure that you are completing the series connection. That means the positive terminal, we are connecting to positive of an eater. Positive terminal, we are connecting positive of an eater. That we can see by red terminal. You see red terminal. Clear? Then negative of the cell should come to negative. Now other end goes to any end. Resistance has no polarity. So it can connect to any end. This end are connected. So from here, this end taking to a key. Then rheostat come back here. So that part of connection is over. And make sure that ammeter is working. Only make sure that this is working. You can go for this way. Clear so any mistake here, now easily you can find out. For example, see I am switching it. See first I turned it off. So this is zero, this is zero. So, so here I am just pressing it. See now, this is working. Is it clear? Milliameter is working now. So you can make sure that you have connected correctly. See, now resistance is zero. You are almost minimum resistance. Not zero minimum. This time current is high here. I am increasing the resistance. See, now current here is decreasing. That means this connection you must be careful. If you connect this one and this wire, right? Instead of connecting here, if you are connecting to this end, while you are moving, there won't be any change. Here only changes will come. See, it is moving this way going out. You should know that concept very clearly. Because if you connect to this wire here, if you are moving, there won't be any change here. So in case you find it's not moving, make sure that you are checking here correctly and connect it properly, right? Now, if this is moving, this circuit is complete. Now we need to connect voltmeter. Voltmeter is always connecting parallel to the load. Ammeter is connecting in series. Voltmeter we are connecting, see, parallel to the resistance. So take the voltmeter, see from here positive, 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 negative, this red is positive. We can connect positive to positive, negative to negative and connect here voltmeter also we can see the real. Now this is a procedure of it. I think it's clear about this circuit connection. Now we understood the procedure part of it. Okay, what we did from cell positive to millimeter negative from this load resistance that we have to find out from here it goes to see rheostat other end of the rheostat it comes back to the key then key to negative terminal and here we are connecting voltmeter parallel to it so millimeter always connecting in series voltmeter millivoltmeter always connecting in parallel make sure that positive should go to positive of the which one millimeter similarly positive should go to positive of millivolt meter. Now reading part of it. First to make uh, current minimum. For that resistance should be maximum. So I pushed it to the side. Now look here. There are seven divisions you can see in this millimeter. Seven divisions. One division is two milliampere. That's the least count. Least count means least division value. So seven into two, 14 milliampere. So we can write here 14 milliampere. That means when this 40 milliampere current is flowing through this load, a voltage drop will come. That voltage drop can be measured by this millivolt. Voltage drop means what? When a current is flowing through here, they collide. Due to collision, they drop some voltages. That voltage only we are measuring here. So that can be measured as here. Uh, this is mainly Ohm's law, okay? V is equal to IR. We know V is directly proportional to current by Ohm's law. And V by I is equal to R. So this R is the resistance of this Y. That's what you are calculating. So here, millivolt reading we know. See, there are five divisions here. Here, one division is 10 millivolt. Least count is 10 millivolt. So, five division, 50 millivolt. So here we can substitute 50 millivolt. It means when this 40 milliampere current is flowing through this resistance, that means flowing through this resistance, voltage developing across here due to collision, voltage drop is 50 millivolt. 
Now repeat the experiment for different set of values. For example, this one now voltage I am increasing to 100 millivolt. See, we are making it to 100 millivolt. So this is 100 millivolt. Now, what is the current flowing through this load to produce this much voltage? Look here, current is now 24. Current is now around 24 milliampere. So mark it 24 milliampere. Again, repeat the experiment. I'm making it 150. Say 150 volt, 150 millivolt. 150 millivolt. To obtain this voltage, how much is the current flowing here? Let us see. Around 38. You can see here 38. 38 milliampere. And again, we are making it to uh, 200 volt. 200 volt. So when this is 200 volt, 200 millivolt, not 200 volt, 200 millivolt, then current will be 50 milliampere. Say 50 milliampere. This reading we are taking from here. So voltage corresponding current we have to measure. Is it clear? Now uh, fifth reading, 200. Right? Uh, 20, only up here it's the range is coming, 220. So here 220 millivolt. Then here you get 54, 54 milliampere. This five set of readings enough. If you can get more readings, you can get more readings. That will give you more accuracy in your reading. Then what we have to do? Here we have to plot a graph. Okay? In a graph paper, we have to do voltage here along y axis, current along x axis. After plotting, your graph will be a proportional graph. Take like this, V is proportional to I. Take the slope of the graph. That means from here you will get difference in voltage, here you will get difference in current. So that will give you resistance. Delta V by delta I will give you resistance. So this is the resistance of this wire. Then we are marking as X or, or anything you can mark it, even you can mark it as R. No issue. So here R is equal to a uh, row is equal to R A by L. Thank you. Clear? Instead of X you can mark it R also no problem. So R A by L. Any doubt in this? Okay. Then after this we have to use a screw gauge. Okay. Using a screw gauge we can find the diameter of the wire. Now, uh, first we calculated the resistance of the wire from this graph, from this table and this graph. Then we need to find out radius. Then we, need, we can calculate area of cross section of this wire. Area of cross section. Area of cross section means this area of cross section. Okay. For this, we need to use screw gauge. First of all, we should get to know different parts of the screw gauge. Screw gauge has main components, one pitch scale here, okay? Here one pitch scale is there, this one pitch scale, you can see readings are in millimeter. This is a head scale, there are around 50 divisions, there are different, different types of screw gauge. In some screw gauge there may be 100 divisions here. Now first we need to calculate pitch. The meaning of pitch is, in this screw gauge actually there are a screw system working inside. Distance between two thread is known as one pitch. That's one pitch. The idea is when a screw rotate one complete times, the distance moved will be equal to this pitch. For example, distance of the pitch is one millimeter. When this head scale, uh, this uh, this one, this point, when we rotate one complete, then distance moved by the screw will be one millimeter. Now. This is a pitch. Now, what we have to do, first, uh, this, this portion is known as a ratchet. This one, this is called ratchet, okay? Holding this ratchet, turn this, okay? Holding this ratchet, this point is called ratchet. This is the head scale, and I've shown you, this is a pitch scale. And there is one line also you can see, here. there's one line. That line is known as base line, okay? On the base line only, Pitch scale readings are marked. And this is head scale. In this screw gauge, readings on the pitch scale is 1 millimeter. And head scale has around 
50 division. If you look here, you can see 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. Just before reaching 0, there's a 45. 45 to 0, again 5 division. So total 50 divisions are here. Now we have to calculate pitch. As I told you, pitch means distance between these two threads. Okay, look here. You bring first this ratchet free here. When ratchet is free, this end touch here. Now slowly bring the zero to this baseline. Baseline. From the zero, rotate one time. Okay, again rotate one more time until that zero reaching baseline. Again rotate one time until that zero reaching again baseline. Now fourth time I'm rotating that zero to baseline. Now you can see distance moved is two millimeters. See this above reading, millimeter reading. After zero, you can see there are two divisions. That means two millimeter. So we can say, okay. So here, uh, distance moved by the screw. During one rotation, distance moved by screw is known as pitch. So in this case, four rotations we made. When we made four rotations, distance moved is we found two millimeter on the pitch scale. See, when this head scale, we rotated four times. Are we rotated four times? First, we have to bring this zero, okay? Zero along the baseline. After bringing to the baseline, rotate completely here. So that it rotates zero, come back to the baseline again. Like that, four times you rotate, you can see that this uh, reading on this two millimeter, you can see. Okay, see here, four times when we rotated, reading comes two millimeter, you can see there, if you come closer and check. Okay, so we can write here, distance moved, distance moved by the screw, distance moved by the screw is two millimeter. Okay, number of rotations, number of rotations is equal to four. But in some screw gauges, when we make number of rotations 4, 4 millimeter it will be. Then you have to write here, 4 millimeter by 4. In this case, in this screw gauge, distance load is 2 millimeter, number of rotations 4 millimeter. Therefore, pitch means what? Num distance moving 1 rotation. That's called pitch. So, 4 rotation 2 millimeter moved. Therefore, 1 rotation 2 millimeter divided by 4. So it will come 0.5 millimeter. So for this screw gauge, distance between the threads of two, distance between these two threads of the screw is 0.5 millimeter. But in the case of screw gauge, if you are getting pitch one millimeter, then this distance will be one millimeter. But this screw gauge which I am using here, for that pitch is 0 0.5 millimeter. Now we need least count. Least count means pitch divided by number of divisions. Number of divisions on head scale. Number of divisions on head scale. Pitch is 0 0.5 millimeter. Number of divisions on head scale is 50. So your answer will come 0 0.01 millimeter. Clear? Here, you can see it is written here, 0 0.01 millimeter. You can directly use this. You don't have to go for all the details here. Directly you can take from here. If you need to calculate, this is the way you have to calculate. First, we have to keep baseline and zero in the same. And four times you rotate. Distance moved by the screw, you calculate. Then distance moved by the screw divided by number of rotations you made. That will give you pitch. Pitch divided by number of divisions on the head scale. Here is 50, some other screw gauge is maybe 100. If you divide, you will get least count of the uh, least count of this screw gauge. It means using this device, we can minimum measure 0 0.1 millimeter. Now, there is a zero error possibility there. When you bring this ratio to free, if zero is exactly coinciding with the baseline, there is no zero error. But here, zero is the two divisions down. So what you have to do, hold this baseline facing you, keep this through gauge upward direction like this, like a pistol, you hold it. 
Let look at the baseline. If the zero is on the right side, zero error you have to take positive. Okay? So here let us see the zero error how it comes. Okay? Look here. So here we can make zero. Zero error. Here you can see from the baseline, zero on the head scale, two division right side. So I'm marking it plus two. This should be multiplied by this count. 0.01 millimeter. Therefore, plus 0.02 millimeter is a zero error. Now, how will you take the reading with it? For that, we need to have a tablet. Code. Okay? So here, this is serial number. This is pit scale reading that is marking as X. Head scale reading that is marking as Y into least count. All readings on the head scale should be multiplied by least count. And this is giving diameter. Diameter. That is D is equal to this X reading plus reading on this plus Y reading. That means Y into least count minus of zero. So in this case, I'm keeping this specimen here between this and CZ. Here we are placing it tightly here. Like this we are placing it here. Okay? Then look at the reading here. First reading here, then you observe we find zero. There is no reading here, not even one division. We are seeing only zero. So serial number one, X is zero. Pit scale reading is zero. You can't see any reading here. Now go to head scale. See this after 45, 46, 47. Division is coinciding with baseline. So we can say head scale reading is 47 into least count 0.01 least count. Then you get 0.47. Now diameter will be 0 plus 0.47. So 0.47 minus of 0 error. What is 0 error? Minus of uh, 0 error 0.02. If zero error come minus, when you substitute here minus, minus, minus with the plus. Here zero error is plus value, therefore directly we are substituting. Then we get the answer 0.47 minus uh, 0.02. So this is 5, 4, point, right? uh, 7 minus 2, 5, this 4, point 0.45. So diameter is 0.45. Like this, repeat. Different portions of this wire. Three, four readings you can repeat from different portions. Keep one here, little more up, little more up. Take two, three reading, and mean reading you take it. Mean reading will give you diameter approximately around 0.45 millimeter. Now divide this by two. So d by two gives radius. See, radius if you want, d by 2. So it will come around 0 0.225 millimeter will come the answer. Okay, so this is a radius. Now using the equation, a is equal to, using the equation, a is equal to pi r squared, we will get area. Then we know length is 80 centimeter or 0 0.8 uh, meter. Clear? Then substitute in the equation, just like before we discussed. Substitute in the equation, resistivity rho is equal to R A by L. R we got from Ops experiment, L is 0.8, area we calculated from here as pi R squared, then we can get resistivity. The resistivity usually comes in the order, some values will come 1.1, something like that, 10 to the power, minus 6, minus 7. Ohm meter somewhere here it's really good okay so this is a resistivity they may ask you to give two three materials so same way using another material also we have to repeat first applying Ohm's law we have to find out resistance of the given material and using screw gauge we have to find out radius of the material calculate area pi r square resistivity you have to calculate so examination you should get two materials you have to find out resistivity of these two materials using Ohm's experiment. Okay? Hope you understood. Thank you. Okay. 
So today we are going to discuss about meter bridge. Meter bridge is a device used to determine the value of the wire. It is unknown to us. Value of the resistance of the wire which is unknown to us. Actually this meter bridge is working based on the principle which is called Wheatstone bridge. Okay, okay. Wheatstone bridge. This in theory you study. Wheatstone bridge is a network system in that there are four resistances P, Q, R and S are connected. And in the middle branch there is a galvanometer connected. When we adjust this P, Q, R and S, basically we are keeping S constant which is to be determined. We are making P, Q and R we can adjust. That, exp uh, that will explain in this interval, that modified form. So if we adjust this, finally this will come to a balancing condition. Balancing condition means say for example, this is 2, this is 4, this is 4, this is 8. If it's coming like that, since this ratio 4 by 2, when 8 by 4, when they are equal, we can get a situation, no current will be flowing through V to V, through the alumnometer. It's because of potential difference here will be 0. Okay, at this condition, we can say P by Q is equal to R by S. See, P by Q is equal to R by S. Here, since this is to be determined, instead of S, we are marking here X. Okay, this Wheatstone bridge, actually, from there only this form is done. Let's have a comparison between this network and this network. Okay, the reinitiency ABC. That means here, ABC. This is the wire. It's a magnetic wire, it's a resistance wire of 1 meter length or 100 centimeter. That's why this got the name meter bridge. Okay, so here A to C, here A to C, A, B, C. This is a resistance wire actually. Is it clear? That can be divided with the help of a jockey here, J. Here in the circuit diagram, if you are taking here, see here, this is the wire A, B, C. This is the jockey. This is the point we are connecting here. That will come to the connection here B, this point. Okay? So this one and this one of the circuit are similar. Now we need to explain about this part. See, resistance box R indicating this resistance. And unknown resistance, this one, is indicating by this region. So if we compare PQ is resistance of this region, P is resistance of this region. Q is resistance of this region. R is resistance we are taking in resistance box. This resistance box and this are same thing. Okay? Then X is this one, S, which we have to determine. So now we need a balancing condition. How can we keep a balancing condition? So for example, this is a resistance wire. 1 centimeter, say 1 ohm. That means 1 ohm per centimeter is a resistance of this wire. So 100 centimeter will have 100 ohm. If this jockey we are keeping at the middle, here to here it is 50 ohm. Here to here 50 ohm. If I am keeping this at 40 centimeter here, then this will be 40 ohm. That will be that will be 60 ohm. So like that, we can choose the suitable wire here having a resistance R per unit length. It can be 1 ohm per centimeter, 2 ohm per centimeter, 3 ohm per centimeter. Which is available in the market that will come in this device. Okay? So, anyway, that will be constant throughout. So, once you keep jockey J here, and this length if you are measuring, that length into R will give you resistance of this region. Similarly, this length and this R will give you resistance of this region. Thus, we can calculate P and Q. See, P and Q. R we can calculate from this resistance box. So, by adjusting these values, you can get the balancing condition. That's what I'm going to show you. Now, you might have understood the comparison between this network, which is explained in theory, and meter bridge in practical. Actually, meter bridge is a modified form of Wheatstone bridge, which can be conveniently used in the laboratory. Because in this form, we cannot directly use. That's what it is modified in this format. Now, let us explain this. Okay? This is the manganese wire. That is this wire. Okay? Resistance box. This is X. 
Here, see this point that is B. It needs to reach this point B, that is this point here B. From there, we are connecting your wire to galvanometer. See, we are connecting galvanometer. This we can make a temporary contact wherever we want on this wire. So once again, I'm saying this is a meter bridge. This is a meter bridge wire AB. Sorry, A C. Meter bridge wire A C. This one resistance box. See, we are connecting in this gap. This gap is in resistance box. This unknown resistance which is to be determined, we are connecting here. That is X. From the middle, this point D. This point, see a wire we are connecting to galvanometer, other end to jockey. So this can make a temporary contact here. Now we need power supply here that we are connecting here. Is it here? A to cell. It can be any polarity. This is a key and this go to here. A bit side connection. This is a circuit connection. Is it clear? Now how we are going to do this? We need a balancing condition for that. This and this and this should be adjusted. This we have to pick down. First insert one power resistance here. Okay, so we have taken here 2 ohm. Let us take 2 ohm resistance. While we are taking this resistance box, make sure that all the keys are tightly connected. Otherwise, this may affect your practical accuracy. So this should be tightly connected. And 2 ohm I am introducing in. Okay, that is 2 ohm. Now we need to find out this balancing line. For this, keep this jockey on this wire. See, now need to show deflection to one side. If you are keeping here, need to show deflection to other side. So naturally, balancing point will come in between. Okay, so we are taking that balancing point here slowly. You can bring, see, now we got balancing point. Here, this is the balancing point. This time, this does not show any deflection. That shows zero reading, you see? That shows zero reading, that point. If you move this side, it is going to this side. If you are moving to this side, deflection to other side. This point, no deflection. That means here, potential here and potential here. Or we can say potential here and potential here are same. Or potential difference is same. Therefore, no current will not flow between B to B. This is called balancing condition. Now, this length. See, this scale has two sides. See, this is 0 to 100. This is down 0 to 100. If you are measuring R here, this is L. So corresponding to R, this side must be L. So we should start from this 0 on the upper scale that comes to 34. 34. Then from here naturally it will come to 66. So 34 and 66 are our reading. So here we have to mark here 34 and this is 66. Now we can substitute there. X is equal to R is how much? 2 into 100 minus L is 66 divided by 34. So here X is equal to 2 into 66 by 34. Then your answer will come 3.8. 3.80. Okay. Now you can repeat this experiment by taking it 3 ohm. Take 3 ohm. Again go with balancing condition. Mark here. L, 100 minus L, calculate it. Then make it for 4 ohm. 4 ohm means here you can take these two keys. See, 2 plus 2, 4 ohm will come here. Okay, it is written 2 plus 2, 4. So here take 4 ohm and L you find out. Similarly, 100 minus L, we can calculate. You can see this is the almost similar values. This can be repeated for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like that, any number. 5 readings minimum we have to take and take mean value of x. Okay, from here you can get mean value of x. Okay, that will come around 3 point something. This is a method we can calculate resistance of this given wire. Now same thing, next uh, this is one of the aim to determine the resistance of this wire. Next experiment to prove law of combination of resistances. So for that we need one more kind of column like this. So this one you take it as x1. Now because first wire we are using this as x1. Okay this one take as x1. You get the reading 3.8 for example. 
Now after that, remove this and take another wire and connect in place of it. Again calculate resistance in the same manner and plot up another channel column that will give you X2. So X1 already got from this channel column. One more thought, time to come similar manner you have to make it and get X2. So we have now two time to come. Say for example, resistance of that wire, we got 4 ohm, for example. Here we got 3.8, another one is X2 may be 4 ohm. Say, this is 3.8, this is a different resistance. Now if you want to prove law of combination, what we have to do? These two wires now connect in series. These two wires. We can connect it series and connect here. Then repeat the experiment just like in previous case. Now we have a third tablet column. Same way, same way, L 100 minus L, but here it will come X1 plus X2 because there is a combination of these two. We will get the third tablet column. Mean value of that will be almost 4.4 plus 3.7.8 approximately. Answer should come. There may be slight error that you can ignore. But now we have three channel column. First channel column with first resistance X1. Second we are making with this X2. Then third one X1 plus X2 connecting in series. The sum of the answers of the X1 and X2 should be equal to the answer obtained in the channel column made with X1 plus X2. This way we can prove series combination of resistances. Parallel combination if you want. Same thing, X1 and X2 keep the same manner like before, but here resistance should be connected parallel. See these two ends we have to fix here like this, and we have to connect here, these two ends. Now these are parallel connection. Now we get one more tablet ball. This answer should be equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 is equal to 1 by R. That means reciprocal of the answers. For example, first X1, 3.8, X2, 4. So if you want, Final combination, x is equal to, you can say, x1, x2, y, x1 plus x2. Answer you are getting should be same as the tabular column from the answer you are getting from the tabular column made with these two resistances. That's why we can calculate, uh, we can prove a uh, series combination, a parallel combination of resistance also. These are the main experiments connected with meter bridge for your CDSA syllabus. Okay, thank you. Today we are going to discuss on uh, to determine the resistance of the given galvanometer. term. That's first aim. Second part of it, uh, to calculate figure of merit of galvanometer. Resistance of the galvanometer, you know the formula, G is equal to R into S by R minus S. Okay? And figure of merit of galvanometer, uh, how we can get, what is the meaning of figure of merit? Figure of merit means the amount of current required for unit deflection. That means in this galvanometer, to have one degree deflection, one deflection, how much current we have to send through the galvanometer. According to that, only we can calibrate this galvanometer. This is called figure of merit of galvanometer. It can be defined as the amount of current required to have a unit deflection in galvanometer. Okay, now let us see the circuit diagram of this experiment. Here we have a cell of EM of 1.5 volt. This EM of the cell is 1.5 volt. There is a key. Here there is a resistance. Okay, R. Here the galvanometer. It's galvanometer resistance to be determined. This is another resistance box which is called shun. And there is a key given here also that is K2. Now this is a channel column. Serial number. Here we have one, two, three. First we are going to introduce 5000 ohm in this resistance. This time this galvanometer will show a deflection. That deflection can mark it. Right? First, this key should be open, this should be closed. When you start the experiment, this key open. So circuit has only cell resistance galvanometer. Only this is a circuit now initially, this is open. So this has a slow roll here. This time, deflection produced by the galvanometer is theta. Now what you have to do? Suppose this galvanometer deflection is 18. Right? So now, take from here around the 50, 60, 70, that range, small resistances. This is 5000 we have chosen. 
here almost of the order of 50 to 100 when resistance shows here then close this key then you can see this gap along with the deflection come to half of this deflection if this is 60 then you have to bring to 8 for that you have to choose resistance from this shunt like uh, 80, 90, uh, 100 like that you have to choose until this deflection becomes half of it that you write here then using this formula we can calculate galvanometer resistance so I will show you this circuit connection see first what we did keep all the parameters as per in the diagram keep the circuit see, like that there and the resistance works I kept here right then what is the meaning galvanometer should be placed here then a TV right but the key take on key and connect here along with this one key we connected and we are going to just join them first okay look here take this one and connect here this I have removed for the convenience of connection okay look here just keep this connected properly make circuit connections are all tight and this one connect to this point see here it is connected here then from the other side of the key see, this is the key one way key from here it comes to galvanometer and it. Okay. from the key it's coming to galvanometer connecting to galvanometer then from this end to this, this connection policy. first always you prefer see this connection okay then only go for parallel uh, connection see it take care of it fix it tightly this also we can connect it and check this circuit is working or not for this what we can do take this key and place here you can see deflection that means this is complete so once you make sure that the series connection is complete then go for this one parallel connection this part okay so from the galvanometer again two connections here take it two wires right so take these two wires here right one kind of wire here and another wire here i'm going to connect here you see this i'm taking it out fix it here So this part is over, right? This is fixed. Clear now. Here we got one connection. This again. Let me do another connection here. From here, one will go to the key and another part to gallium yeah, over here. See, this we are connecting to this key, this and another wire. This. See, this much only connection now. You see, now here, this is a series connection we finished first. This we have finished first. Then from here, we have taken off. See, here, we have taken off resistance through. Clear? Now first what we have to do, this is open and this is closed, okay? And from this one, take around 5,000. What is 5,000? This is 5,000, you can see here 5,000. Take 5,000 ohms, make the keys, other keys tight. See, all the keys should be tight here, otherwise they will have a loose contact, you will not get correct readings.
And before the examination, there will be a sandpaper to keep over here. Take this piece and clean it. Otherwise, this, you know, there is a green color. You know, this copper reacting with air. So that producing a green color thing that causes insulation. So circuit connections won't be complete. Okay, we usually keep, but after three, four days again, it will come. This examination is there for many days. So just keep here. First we chose 5,000 from. Okay, see 5,000. That I'm marking here, 5,000. Now look at the deflection here. It comes around 15. So 14, you can see 14 here, deflection. Okay, then that you mark here, deflection, 14. Now we have to make it seven. For that we have to choose shunt. For that what we will do? Fix here, this one. Right? Then from here I'm choosing around 50. Now it came to uh, less than eight. Then we need seven. So I'm choosing 100. So then it's increased, okay? I'm taking 20. Now it came back to seven. Now you can see it is seven. How much I chose here? 70. So mark here, 70. Shunt is 74. Repeat the experiment for uh, 6,000. 6,000 means 5,000 plus 1,000 here. You see, choose this key. Now this total is 6,000. Clear? For 6,000, again, deflection you can see. Take this out. Okay, only this connection should be there. Then again, it goes to around uh, 30, uh, 13. It comes to 12. Deflection is now 12. For 6,000. Clear? So how much we need here? 6. Is it clear? So again, you close this one and repeat the experiment. You see, that's 6. Again, 70. Okay, so this again repeating, it's coming 70 only. Repeat the experiment for 7,000. Okay, so I'm taking here, uh, here, yeah, this 2,000 I have taken. See? 5,000 plus 2,000, 7,000. Remove this one from here. Now only this connection is there. You can see 10. Reflection is 10. Okay. We need here 5. Again, close this one after this. Close it. Look here, it's 5. So, see, this will remain same. 7. If slight change is also no issue. If it's remaining, constant also no issue. Now substitute this values here. You will get galvanometer constant. It comes around the order of 100 something that value. It will come 100 ohm. Uh, in between that one. Right? The answer is, it comes around uh, 102, 103, that range. So, write all this galvanometer for resistance we calculate here. Take mean value, mean value, and write. The unit is ohm. Right? So, approximately your answer will come of the order of 102, uh, like that. That order it will come for those ohms. Right? So, next one we need. Uh, figure of merit of galvanometer, second part of it. For that, this circuit is used. So, same readings we can copy in the channel point. Same readings. You don't know how to do again. My right? figure of merit means this part I removed. You see? Only this connection is there. Right? And for that, there's a formula. Same tablet column you have to use. The only change this I will tell you. So, I'm removing this and drawing the another tablet column now. Okay? The change is here. We are making another channel column for this figure of merit of galvanometer. A channel column here. Serial number. Okay, EMF of this cell. EMF of cell. Right? EMF of the cell 1.5. Then resistance. Resistance. And here deflection produced. Deflection in the galvanometer. Then next come figure of merits. Figure of merits. Figure of merit formula K is equal to E divided by R minus R minus G. R plus G R plus G into theta. This is the formula there. Okay. So serial number one, EMF of the cell 1.5 they are using here. Resistance, previously we have taken. 5000. That time deflection was in the previous uh, experiment, deflection was 14. Take the 14, calculate here. K is equal to 1.5 divided by uh, here resistance 5000. Galvanometer, you get the mean value of the previous channel column. 
mean value of previous tablet column. That is the galvanometer. The assistant that comes around 102 under that range. What value are getting from that? Right here. Into theta. Theta is how much? 14. It comes in the denominator. Okay? That comes in the denominator into 14. Right? Your reading will come approximately 2.18 uh, K value. Then repeat this experiment. Repeat for different values here. Same 1.5. This is 6000, then it came 12 and repeat. So for all values, you repeat it. These readings you can copy from previous tablet column and calculate, figure out where it using this equation. Take the mean value. The answer will come around 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 5 ampere. Ampere per division, right? Ampere per division. Current required for unit reflection. Clear? These are the two uh, aim of this apparatus, objective of this apparatus. Okay, thank you. So good afternoon everyone. Today uh, let us discuss about how to find out focal length of a convex lens by parallax method. See actually parallax method is the basic idea of parallax method. If you keep the, this one finger and keep another finger in front of it and close your eye automate. See when you close left eye you can see the right gap, when you close right eye you will see the left gap so that you can see these two fingers move across each other if you close your eyes automatically. So here if these two fingers are together and do the same exercise you can see they move together. Same method technique they are adapting here. Usually how we do it, we keep a candle here and a screen here and this is sufficient amount of light refracting through prism forming image on the screen but here we don't have a candle, we don't have a screen so that's why we are using a parallax method so here this needle acts as an object, this we call object needle this is the convex lens of focal length to be determined this is image locating needle his role is similar to a screen in our experiment we studied in 10th standard. So here first what we have to do, uh, keep this all center, see this needle, center of the lens, this one all in the same line. Here you can adjust it to and fro and we can adjust this also to and fro and this also to and fro. So that all this should be in the same line. Now first you can see from here you look into the image needle okay look you can see that object that forms an inverted image here so when an object is far image will be somewhere near to the lens this is the image locating needle now first i am setting this image locating needle coinciding with the image and if you move your eye this left and right then you can see there's a gap between image and this needle okay just see that image moving See here that image and objects are having a large gap between them. Now I will show you after adjusting this image locating needle will come under the image. Okay, that adjustment what you have to do. Looking at that image, slowly move this forward. Because diminished image will be closer to the lens. So slowly move towards there. And keep moving your eye left and right. Finally, you will get this to image needle and the image, both ends are coinciding and move together. See here. Now we can see these two are moving together. Okay, now parallax is eliminated. At this position, image is above this image locating need. Okay. So now come to the reading point. You can see here, this is a 10 cm, this is at 50 and this is now around uh, uh, here 55, 60, around 63, 63 here that point. So here this is 10, this is 50, this is remaining fixed, we don't move it through the experiment. And this is uh, how much is coming, 50, 55, 60, 63, this point is 63 position of object needle position of lens position of convex lens position of convex lens and here 
it comes position of image locating needle image locating needle then you then here it comes to be these are the readings you have to plot here so this is 50 here this comes uh, 50 55 60 63 this comes around 63 so difference here 10 50 minus 10 that will come u that is 40 that means from 0 if you are taking from 0 if you are taking this is 50 this is 10 so 50 minus 10 will give you this distance that is 40 that is called image distance 40 centimeter similarly sorry that's called object distance okay object distance this is the image distance here okay the image distance is now 50 63 63 minus 50 13 is it clear this is the first reading now we have to repeat this experiment by moving this to another 10 centimeters. So this can go to 20 here. So it will go to 20. So naturally when object moving closer, image goes far. So same way to repeat this experiment here. So we can take here again new position. See here. Like this MA, again this uh, parallax is eliminated. Now there is no parallax between the image and the object. So repeat the reading again for this. So here you will get 20. 20. So this is remaining 50. Now this reading will be how much? Uh, this is 60, around the 60. 4 or 65, like that, 65. So, difference here is 30, this will come around uh, 15. So, this way you can repeat for uh, moving this to 30, then this will move like that to diminished image and almost similar size image and a magnified image. If it comes very closer, it will come, you will get a magnified image. Very close to the giving, you will get an inverted virtual image. And that should not be taken. You should keep somewhere near to this value. Then you will get a magnified image. So, here you get magnified image. You can see here magnified image. So, again, this is the images moving together. Parallax is eliminated. Okay, so here for this reading, you can see this always remains 50, 50, 50. This reading keep on increasing like 63, 65, uh, then it may go to uh, 70, like that. That we have to keep on increasing. This value will increase here. So difference when you are taking, you can see U value decreasing at the same time V value increasing. Okay, then here you have to plot a graph between U and V. This is U, the main position. This is V, uh, ob this is object distance, this is image distance. And U should be negative side. Coordinate should be negative side. Now plot a graph between U and V from this table. You will get a graph like this. Now exactly 45 degree, mark a line. Here you can see the uh, scale should be same on both X and Y axis. Then you can see here this value V and this value U will be equal. We know when U and V are equal, object distance and image distance are same, this is equal to 2M. In the case of a convex length, when object is at 2f, image is also at 2f. That means u is also 2f, image also 2f. This will come around in our laboratory. This length somewhat around 20 centimeters comes. But still make sure that there are different lenses. You know that there are different lenses. Focal length may slightly vary. For this lens, answer will come around 20 centimeter. And f is equal to 20 by 2, that is 10 centimeter. This is your answer. Thank you. Hope you understood this experiment. So, good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to discuss about uh, angle of minimum uh, minimum deviation. So, first, uh, we will study angle of incidence and deviation relation in a equilateral prism. So, here, PQ is the incident ray. Incident at the face A. So angle of incidence is the angle between normal and the incident ray. And the refracted ray is given by QR. 
then S is the and R is the emergent ray. R is the emergent ray. So here, if there is no prism here, this light ray would have been traveling along straight line. When you place the prism, two refraction taking place: one refraction here and another refraction here. So finally, the light ray emerging out in this direction. So from actual part, how much it is deviating when it is emerging out? That's called angle of deviation. So this is the direction of incident ray. This is the direction of emergent ray. So this line and this line usually we trace from here extending it towards here. That angle is angle of deviation. So as the angle of incidence increasing, these are the angle of incidence we are taking for this practical. 30 degree, 40 degree, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. As we are increasing this angle, you can see initially this angle of deviation decreasing. For example, if this is the prism, uh, for example, the 30 degree, if I'm giving angle of incidence, the refractive ray will bend very large, you can observe. And this is the emergent ray. So from here, it makes a almost a larger angle of around 50 degree or approximately 48, 50, that range it will come, that value. And if this is increasing, angle of incidence we are increasing to 35, then you can see this bending also reducing a range. Okay, and here angle of deviation also reducing, see, when 35 is applied, that become 42. Then again we are increasing to 40, 40. This time, this angle of incidence, uh, this refractive rate again becoming a little more strange now and deviation also decreasing to next point 40. When this angle given around 45 degree, this light ray you can see this travel almost parallel to the base of the prism. That's what I have shown, parallel to the base of the prism BC. Okay, at this point we can see this emergent ray that makes the deviation, this is the minimum possible value of deviation. Again, if we increase to 50, again, minimum uh, uh, angle of deviation is increasing to, say, higher value. Uh, it was 38, that again increasing to 42. So the minimum value of deviation at which, see, this refractive ray is parallel to the base of the prism. This is the minimum deviation possible. So it's called angle of minimum deviation. Okay, again, if you are increasing to 55, you can see angle of incidence in angle of uh, deviation increasing. So this is the graph. So angle of deviation, angle of incidence. See, for smaller angle, that's about 30 degree, see, around 15 degree deviation. Then as the angle increasing to 35, 40, when it comes to around 45 degree here, see, in this experiment, it becomes 38. That's a minimum deviation position. Again, if you are increasing, deviation is increasing. Clear? So this is the aim of the apparatus in order to determine the angle of minimum deviation using this graph. Okay, so how we do this practically? This is the theory part of it. First, draw a straight line on this A4 size paper. Okay, then place the given prism on this point and make a frame outer line. Okay, see here. So we have drawn a prism here first. This is the prism here. Okay, then what you have to do in this prism, first you mark here, angle of, uh, we need normal first of all. So take a ruler, set any line here and draw a perpendicular, see, a perpendicular line. So this can act as a normal to the surface. Now, which is angle here for see, 30 degrees. So keep this one with respect to normal. See this base of the protractor, with respect to we have to measure the angle. The base will be along the normal. Okay, so this point should come to this point. See, this cross line should come to this point and see along this line. From here, measure 30 degree, 10, 20, 30 degree are marking. From there, an uh, incident ray we are drawing. So, this angle is 30 degree. Now, keep the prism here. After keeping the prism here, if you look from this side, okay. If you look from this side, you can see a line. Okay, see, you can see a line. Right? Looking at that line, we have to keep these pins. Okay? Keep these two pins there. Keep these two pins there. Right? 
And we have to see that, that line here. Hold this ruler in that line, exactly along that line, okay? And draw here, along that line, right? Then keep these two pins also on that line. So that it looked like, actually this line, after deviation, appeared to be coming this straight line. Is it clear? So these two pins also you will see in this line. So here you keep these two pins here and make sure that these two pins and images of these two pins are all in same line. After that, remove this and from here draw a line. Okay? Here, this is incident ray extended. If there is no prism, this light ray would be going this way. Now here, this is a deviation point, right? See here, draw this line. Measure this angle. From where will you measure this angle? Keep this protractor with respect to this incident line. So baseline of the protractor should kept at this point, this joining point, okay? Keep there and measure this angle. It comes around 50, that angle, right? So this you mark 50. Repeat the experiment for this 35, 40, 45, okay? Here, again, I'm marking the prism here, keeping this line, prism we are keeping here. Then again, draw the frame, like outer line of the prism. Complete here, and draw normal. This is a normal, and make it 35 degree, I'll show you here 40 degree, you have to go 30, 35, 40, 45 as per this slab, right? So here we can take here 40, I'm taking here for example, 40, 10, 20, 30, 40. So in between you have to plot 30, 35, since there is no time to, uh, that's what, to reduce the time, I'm just uh, showing this, after 30 I'm directly taking 40, so you have to do 35 also, okay? Then here draw this line and look through the prism here. You can again see the line here. If you look from here, you can see that line there. So keep this pencil, uh, keep this ruler along that line, okay? So approximately you will get idea where that image will come. Right here. Then keep these two pins there. One pin here, another pin here. So make sure that Along this line, that means images are done. Okay? Then here you can keep the two pins also. So all the four pins are now in the same line. Okay? You can just check here. See this images? You can see them. These two pins and images of the two pins will be seen here. All are in the same line. Is it clear to you? Right. Now what you have to do? Take this one. Uh, extend it just like here what you have done extend it extend this line then emergent ray also extend towards back this is angle of deviation measure that angle again see here I'm keeping the protractor here measure that angle comes around 40 here uh, what's the angle we have taken 40 degree right and 40 degree we need to get 40 you see here around see 40 40 it comes right okay approximately 40 it comes maybe slightly changing while doing it this is 40 so mark here that 40 or 40 to whatever it is and repeat the experiment for all these angles you can plot a graph like this you see plot a graph deviation here this is angle of incidence so nature of the graph will come like this you may be getting points slightly deviating but you have to choose the graph in such a way it should be a smooth curve and mark the lowest point that's a minimum deviation point, okay? Here we can mark delta is equal to delta m. That is 38 degrees the minimum deviation. This is the result of this experiment. So here, to a straight line, right? And prism, place the prism over here. Draw a frame here for the prism, okay? Then it will be this way. Right? Now we need to draw a normal. It's normal to the surface. So along with this line, draw the normal. Along with this line, draw the normal. 
this is the normal right then with respect to normal we have to mark first angle of incidence say i am starting with 35 for example okay 35 so from here the light ray will fall here this way this angle of incidence right here i am keeping two pins here see here we can keep two pins and keep the prism back here actually if there is no prism this light ray would travel in this direction along straight line but when you place this prism you can see that light ray refract see like this we can come this way so this pins the pins here or oh, you won't get over here okay uh, so here actually this one refracting through this way it is entering here and emerging out this way right so that point we have to find out so here we have to use the look from here you can see a line okay first to take this ruler and fix that line same line you should draw line drop see make a line here first of all okay you can make a line and keep here two pins along with that keep two pins here right then if you look from here these all four pins will be same line this image you are seeing these all pins are in same line okay now this is the incident ray this is the emergent ray right now join this emergent ray to this incident ray direction see here the join it right so this is the angle of deviation measure that angle of deviation this is now we have taken 35 degree you have to start from 30 degree now i have taken from 35 degree and you see this point you fix here base of the uh, this protractor and it comes around how much see 42 this angle 42 degrees come right and 42 degree is it clear now repeat the experiment keeping this again here draw another frame here so this angle of deviation for 35 degree right 35 degree 42 okay now again this draw this diagram okay complete it complete here see here roller you keep like this is this line is along this line then you can draw easily normal right then from here keep this protractor here 10 20 30 35 40 now we need 40 right next angle 40 draw a line again see here 40 keep the prism here this is 40 degree and keep the prism over here look at this side you can see that line keep the ruler and make a line along the same line almost along the same line like this more picks to pins here to pins here then you can see that image of the pins so this line which i have drawn so up of the else can be correct take one pin fixing that line okay so all the four pins will be in the same line now see here so these images we can see here that pin and this all pins are in same line okay now take this out mark this point zero right then complete the rays. This one extended the direction of incident ray. This is emergent ray. Angle between this incident ray and this emergent ray give angle of deviation. Again, measure this angle. When it is measuring, it comes around uh, at 40 degree. Uh, it should be 40, right? So it comes around 40 degree, right? So that is a which position yeah again one more position should go we get minimum deviation so repeat this experiment 35 40 45 50 around six readings clear then plot the graph over here in a graph paper this plot deviation here current here 
sorry, angle of incidence here. Then graph will go like this, approximately. So this is minimum deviation position. Is it clear? So good morning everyone. So today uh, we are going to discuss about how to find out refractive index of this glass lab. Okay, usually we know refractive index of the glass lab comes around 1.5, 1.4 to 1.6 in between you get the values. Okay, for this we are using traveling microscope. Clear? So for this what actually happening here? This is the method you are going to adapt here. On a here, on a platform here, that with this point, this point of the microscope, we are giving a marking with the head. And by adjusting this microscope here, okay, we can get a very clear image, focused image of this marking here. By that point, we are marking an error one. Here, this is the traveling microscope. Okay, this is a traveling microscope. This end. So we are focusing to this point R. Uh, this is R1 because for this point we get R1. This reading we can get from vernier scale here. You see, that's a main scale and vernier scale attached here. So from that we can take the reading R1 that you'll explain after this. Okay, so this is R1. Then after that, keep this glass lab over here above that marking. Keep this glass lab above that marking. That means glass lab usually comes above here. Now we know light ray from here travel this way and went away from the normal as is going from denser to rarer medium. Light rays traveling from denser to rarer medium. So with respect to normal, they travel away from the normal. So this rays are definitely coming from little upper point from beneath this point. Now you can see if you look through the microscope, you won't see any image. That image will be blurred. So again, what you have to do, since this point is shifted here to the point R2. Okay, that's called vertical shift. That shifting is known as vertical shift, R2. This has to be adjusted into more upward. Now, new position of this microscope will come here to R2 to be shifted here. Then again, you will get a very clear image. Okay, that's called R2. Again, that reading we can calculate using this main scale and vernier scale. Now, third position, put some glycopodium powder or with a pen you can just make a small marking on the top of this glass slab. Like this, over this egg, we can make a small marking over here like this, over this. And again, focus onto that point. Then again, microscope how to shift to a new position which is called R3. Now, three readings we have. On the surface, when microscope focus, we put R1. And at this point, after vertical shift, that point, we are getting R2, microscope will be here. Then on the surface, you are putting some glycopodium powder or a marking. Glycopodium powder is like a yeast, a small white powder. If it's not available with the ball pen mark, you can just make some marking over it and focus on the top. That point is R3. Then we have microscope now shifted here, here to here, third point, microscope K. Right? Now, difference in this two will be, that means R1 to R3, if I take it, that will give you real thickness of the glass slab, that's called real depth. And R2 to R3, that will give you an apparent depth. Apparent depth means what we feel at that point. Actually, marking here, since we place this glass slab due to this refraction effect, this point appears to be raised. So now that new point, see, R3 minus R2 will give you apparent depth. Now finally, N is equal to real depth by apparent depth. The answer will come around 1.4 to 1.6. That will be the answer. So tablet for my we are marking. Uh, we have to mark when they can push tablet out. Okay? So this is serial number reading 1. This is X3. That's a main scale reading. Okay? Main scale reading. Then a vernier scale reading that is y into least counts. Then what have to do? This to be added. That will be the position R1. Or will you get it? X plus y into least count. Okay? So this reading plus this reading, then R1 you will get the first reading. Like that R1, R2, R3, we have to mark here. So here uh, we have seen reading corresponding to this ground, we have taken R1. Then this is lifting up. 
So that will be R2. That is corresponding to this point. That is of the vertical shift. It is happening because of refraction effect. Then on the surface of the glass lab, we have to put some marking. Uh, otherwise, you place glycopodium powder over here. In case glycopodium powder is not available in the laboratory, you can use a, a ballpoint pen or ink pen and mark some marking over there. Just like we mark here on the top. And focus this microscope over there. Okay, then you will get the point R3. So first position R1 microscope is here. Second position R2, you lifted the microscope, raised the microscope to a new point. And third on the surface, it is coming to R3. So difference between R1 and R3 will give you what real depth. And difference between R2 and R3 will give you apparent depth. And refractive index formula, real depth by apparent depth. Okay, so in this tabular column, First, we have used the vermeer caliper, right? That tabular column. Serial number one. We have main scale reading, that is X, vermeer scale reading into least count. The so least count of a uh, vermeer in this uh, microscope we are using in the laboratory is 0.01 millimeter. 0.01 millimeter is a least count. That's also marked here 0.01 millimeter is the least count of this vermeer of this. Uh, traveling microscope. So then X plus Y will give you total reading. So corresponding to this one, you take the reading from the microscope and write. Corresponding to R2, again you have to take the reading from the microscope, that would uh, be a scale. Then corresponding to the surface R3. So here we can say R1 minus R3, okay? R1 minus, sorry, R3 minus R1. R3 minus R1 will give you real depth. Then R3 minus R2 between these two points will get apparent depth. Okay, between these two points. That these two readings will give you apparent depth. That means this depth from here to here. Apparent depth. Then refractive index is equal to real depth divided by apparent depth. Okay, so what is the real depth here? R3 minus R1, R3 minus R1, that will give you real depth, divided by apparent depth is R3 minus R2, this point is R2, R3 minus R2, this is a theoretical part of it. Now let us take the reading from here, I will explain how to take the reading from microscope, okay. So here, uh, if you are taking this side, see this is two part of this vernier scale, right. Once this is fixed, you should not adjust, you should not touch here, right? So here, see, this has one main scale reading and vernier scale reading, okay? This is the main scale reading and vernier scale reading. Now, first I will show the readings here. First I will take the reading and then explain on the board how it is coming up, okay? Now I set for initial reading, that is uh, coming like... This is simple magnified, I can eyepiece. Using this, you can see this reading magnified. For that, this you have to use to see move to and fro very close. So, according to your convenience, you have to adjust this simple magnifier so that very clear image you will get here. So, first you have to take main scale reading, main scale reading, same like in Vermeer. Okay, so first the main scale reading, I'm going to take it 13.5. Now here it becomes 13.5. Here it becomes 13.5. So here the uh, main scale reading now we got 13.5. So when you look through it, how we have seen, I'm going to mark here. In the main scale, you can see there is here, say for example, uh, here zero. Then divisions, there's a small division 0.5 and a longer division 1 millimeter. Then again small division. And longer, small, longer, like that, you can see divisions like this. You can see this will be the division pattern on your vernier main scale. Okay, so here this is 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, fifth reading will be larger one. Okay, but there is no mark in there. Like that, only it's marking. Suppose uh, for the convenience I'm checking here. This is, uh, this point is, for example, 10, 10, okay, or it might be marking there 1, mil, one centimeter, 1 centimeter can be treated as 1, 10 millimeter. So, if it is marked to 1, this is 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5,
this is uh, 1.5 this will be uh, sorry this is 10 right 1 capital letter is 10 so this is 10.5 11 11.5 12 12.5 and this is 13 13.5 this is 14 the reading which i observe there will be like this like this it is like this see it is very close to this reading which reading is this this is 10 actually there it is marking as 1 centimeter but we are reading it as 10 millimeter i'm going to give all answers in millimeter so uh, this is 10 millimeter then 11 12 13 this is 13.5 here, then this is 14, but this is not reaching 14, just below that. So I'm writing 13.5. Now this reading we need to find out. For that we have used vernier reading. For vernier reading, if this division is exactly half, you can see on vernier there are 50 divisions. You can see that in the vernier there are 50 divisions. So if this arrow of the of vernier scale is exactly mid between the two divisions between these two divisions here we can say this coinciding point for the word there will be 25 if, if it is little above that can go to 30 30 by 40 like that if this line is little down less than 25 then the reading it may come so here you can see this line is very close to this so when you check, check it you can see 45 division but 45th division is coinciding there so we can write here 45 into 0 0.01 least count that will become 0 0.45 so your answer will become 13.9 uh, 13.95 millimeter or this is a uh, initial reading r1 similarly r2 after placing this glass lab again you have to take the reading okay so after placing this glass lab now you won't see that image very clearly there you have to raise it again. See, we are raising it again. Again, I got a very clear reading. See, very clear reading we got here again. Right? Repeat the I mean uh, reading here. Right? Look okay. here. Now it's coming 19.5. Very near to 2. 19.5. This reading comes around 19.5. Okay? And one is theoretic against very close to neck reading. 19 and 20 will come to here 13, then 14, 15, 17, then 18, 19. After that, division set will come. Okay, 19.5. Here also around the point 35, 35th division of the vernier, you can see it's point starting there. So your answer will come 19.85. Now, third reading. Here you have to mark on the Top of the glass slab. Here you have to mark on the top of the glass slab some lines. And again, I am focusing on the lines. Very clear image we got. Again, we are taking the reading here. That is 30.5. After 3. There you can see 3. 3 centimeter indicating 30 millimeter. After that, 1 division. So 30.5. There you can see 30.5. Then here almost uh, around the, that 0 point coinciding somewhere. Yeah, with it. So 30.5. Then around the 30th division is coinciding there. 30th division. So 0 0.30. So here R3 will be 30.80, 30 30.80. So from this table, now we got R1, R2, R3, right? So here R3 minus R2, 30.8 minus 19.85 is 16.85 will come. Then uh, next one, R3 minus R2, 30.80 minus 19.85 will give you 10.95. If you divide it, you are getting the answer 1.53. This is the refractive index of the glass lab. Okay, thank you. So, well, today we are going to discuss about PN junction diode. First of all, we should know what is the meaning of this. What is this PN junction diode? 
PM junction diode is an electronic device. Actually, it's such a small device. It's an electronic device which maintains current only in one direction or it is called unidirectional current. That's called PM junction diode. It is similar to a valve connected in a water pipe. See, in a water pipe, water can flow on both sides. This is two direction. If we keep a valve, then current will flow only to one side. Opposite side valve will never open. So similarly, this PN junction diode will act in an electrical circuit. If you are connecting an AC here, in AC you know current will keep reversing the direction. But in this case, current will flow only one side. Opposite side diode will not permit the current. That theory part, how it happens like that, you study in theory. So for the timing you try to understand, this device will allow current only to one side. It's almost behaving like a valve in a water pipe. That prevents opposite flow, only one side current will flow. Now let's go back to here, circuit diagram. In this circuit diagram, look here, this is a cell and a key and a rheostat. Same thing here, see a cell and a key and a rheostat. Usually in an ordinary circuit, rheostat, in an Ohm's law circuit and all, rheostat we are using as a current controlling device. That means if you are keeping it here, current entering here and flow this way out. So just increasing the resistance and reducing the current in a Ohm's law circuit. But here purpose is different. Here, this cell we are connecting to see this lower end of it. So this voltage get divided over here. For example, here you are giving say 1.5 volt. Here you are connecting a 1.5 volt. Okay. Then here you can see this end you will get the potential 1.5 volt. Then that become 1.4, 1.3, 1.2, 1.1, then 1.9 until it becomes zero. This is the way this voltage is divided on this rheostat. Now if you are connecting this moving end here, see this much voltage available to the diode. So this is the way how much voltage you want, that voltage we can keep obtaining from here by adjusting this rheostat. Same thing here if I am explaining, this 1.5 volt if I am connecting here, see this is positive, positive of the cell, okay that connected to this point, this then connected to negative. So this 1.5 volt available here. That become 1.4, 1.3, 1.2, keep diminishing, it becomes zero here. See, if I'm keeping here, see, this much voltage. So, for example, if this is 1.5, if this is a point of 1.5 voltage now available to diode. This is the system, this rheostat helps you to obtain as the voltage divided. Usually in Ohm's law circuit, this is like a resistance device, resistance control, but here it is acting as a potential divider circuit. That means if you keep moving here, see more voltage you get. See here, more voltage available there. If you are keeping here, less voltage only available here. So how much voltage you want that you can get from this device. So here, role of the rheostat is a voltage divider or potential divider. This is only a little complicated to understand. The remaining part you see, now how I am supplying this uh, voltage to this diode. From here, see ammeter. Ammeter always connecting in series. Then positive to positive. Negative directly to the diode. Diode has two region. P region and region. It's actually called PN junction diode. If you come back to the diagram, here you can see see P region and region. But in real cap, you really think, look like a small capsule. Here there's a white color ring, you can see, silver color ring. So if you are looking at the diode, it will be just like a small capsule thing like here there is a white color ring you can see. This side is N region, this side is P region. So here also we can see this side is N region, this side is P region. When we connect always P region should go to positive end, is it? Positive connect to P region. N region go to negative end of the diode. Then only it is called forward biased. This time it will allow current to flow. If it is connected reverse, it will be reverse currents. For example, if upper side is negative, lower side positive, then it will not allow the current to flow. Then it is called reverse bias. Here we are going to focus on forward bias. Okay, in forward biasing, positive, see, positives of the terminal of the battery connected to here, 
from this end positive of the millimeter here again p p region p imagine like positive p region of diode then end region come back to this end because see this much voltage this much voltage only we are giving to diode across the diode voltage across the diode if you want this voltmeter instead of connecting here if you want you can connect here also no issue you can connect here also because that voltage is positive to positive of the p of the diode negative to millimeter millimeter to negative and here voltmeter can connect or here it can connect it doesn't matter because millimeter always connecting in series voltmeter always connecting in parallel so this much voltage only available across the diode So if you want both connect, you can connect here. Here, yeah. positive connecting to P, P to this rheostat, rheostat to ammeter, milliammeter, milliammeter to diode P region, P region to here, and circuit is complete now. Now we will do the practical side. Switch on the key. Okay. Now we can adjust this rheostat. Here, both meter, ten divisions. See zero to five scale. I'm using zero to five scale. So ten division one volt. So one division is point one volt. So here one division shows point one volt. So first I'm setting voltage to point one volt. Is it now point one volt available? Point one volt available across it. See no current here. That means that voltage is not sufficient enough to make the diode to come to four volt by itself. So here serial number one first is zero zero voltage zero current zero. Second, I'm increasing this to point one volt. Then here we are getting zero current. Then three, we can make it see point two volt. Point two volt, see zero current. Point three, zero current. Point four, zero current. Point five, again zero current. Point six, see slightly degree two milliampere. See one division zero to 10 division here, 20 milliampere. One division, 2 milliampere. One division is deflecting now. So now here voltage is 0.6. See here, 0.2, no current. 0.3, no current. 0.4 volt, no current. When we get 0.5, then you can see that's a 2 milliampere current flowing here. Now that would start allowing the current to flow. Okay. Next we are going to zero point seven. See here, here zero point seven. Then here this becomes see around sixteen ampere, sixteen milliampere here. So this is seven zero point six. See just point one degree current fixed suddenly increases to sixteen milliampere. Then again we are allowing the current to flow. Okay. Next, we are going to zero point seven. See how here zero point seven. Then here this becomes see around sixteen ampere, sixteen milliampere here. So this is seven zero point six. See this point one increase, current six suddenly increases to sixteen milliampere. Then again we are increasing to next zero point eight. See zero point eight. Current becomes almost. See look here seventy six. So here eight. That means eighth number, serial number, eighth reading. Uh, voltage zero point seven. This become how much now? Sixty, seventy, seventy eight, seventy eight milliampere. Once you got the reading, you can plot a graph. Okay. This is voltage. This is current. If you are plotting, see your graph will come like this until zero point one. 0.2, 0.3, 0.4 until 0.7 here. Okay, according to reading, what you are plotting is 0.6 to millimeter. 0.7 means there is a large increase. Okay, so this way only current will increase. Initially, for smaller voltages, increase in current will be very very smaller. And beyond 0.7, this is called forward breakdown voltage. So this is one of the observation we need. What is the forward breakdown voltage of the diode? That is zero point seven. Okay, that's how the current become linear. Quickly it is increasing. Until then, there is a slow increase. Clear? Now what we have to do? We have to take the slope of the graph. 
see point seven, point eight. You know, delta V is now zero point one volt. Corresponding values here and here, you have to plot. Maybe twenty milliampere, two eighty milliampere, like that. That one reading you will get. So this delta I, this is delta V. You have to take delta V by delta I, or reciprocal of the slope. You will get your answer around uh, uh, three, four, in between order of ten ohm. Approximately this order, you will get the resistance. This resistance is known as forward bias resistance of the diode. So these are the two results we have to write here. First one, forward breakdown voltage. This point, this tangent when you draw that point you are touching, that's a forward breakdown voltage. Which is zero point seven, you are getting like that. Zero point six, you are getting like that value. Now point one point extra put here. Point eight volt. Draw a slope here. Easy. Find a slope. Delta V by delta I. That means reciprocal of the slope will give you the resistance of the diode. This is a experimental observation. Finally, we have to write as a result. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. So here, uh, in your practical examination, the pattern is. There will be two practicals, right? That from section A one question will come, section B one question will come. So when you open your answer sheet, there will be two question paper given. First experiment number one, then experiment number two. Then there will be one more part that is activity, right? So here, uh, first you have to finish the practical one, then practical two, as per that you have done in the laboratory. Then is activity. Mainly they are asking uh, trace. A refraction through a glass lamp. If such question come, how will you answer this question? We don't have to go very detailed. Same like this glass, a paper, a paper sheet, glass lab will be provided. So here, uh, the activity. Then what we have to do? Keep a glass lab here. Same like in prism experiment. Draw a frame over here. Okay. Then you will get this frame. Look, is the outline of this glass lab. Mark here. Outline of this glass. Then, as usual, we are marking a normal to the surface. We are marking a normal, and using a protractor, any angle you can choose. Usually, we are taking 30 degree or 40 degree. How much is convenient for you? Take the angle 10, 20, 30. Let us take 40. Okay, right. Then from here, draw a line. This is what you have to do in the examination time. You will be provided glass lab and a paper, and this arrangement will be provided on your table. And now we keep this glass lab here and keep two pins here. Keep two pins. Okay. Keep two pins here along this line. You know, this light ray actually it has to go along straight line. So that path you mark first. It is traveling along straight line. But when you play, you can see this light ray will bend it towards normal and traveling here and bend away from normal. So there's a lateral shift you can see. That's what we're going to find out here. So looking through this side, we can see the two pins. Okay. Then mark the line there. Okay. See the two pins. Along the two pins, keep another pin here. One pin here. And one more pin you take and keep it. Clear? So all so that all the four pins are in same line. This image you will see little shifted here because of this refraction effect. Now take this glass lamp. Mark the points here and complete this line. Complete this line. So actually this light ray reaching to the prism here and refracting this way, you see, refracting to this side. And this is a normal to this surface. Now from here, you can measure angle of incidence, angle of refraction here, I1, R1. This is angle of incidence on the second phase, this is angle of emergence. But we are asked to mark lateral displacement in your activity. So measure this distance. This was the actual path, how much it is displaced. Before placing glass lab, light ray was going this way. After placing the glass lab, light ray shifted here. Clear? So here, you can just measure this angle. You see, here to here, 1.4, right? 1.6. So you can mark here, lateral displacement is 1.6 centimeter. Right here, lateral displacement is 1.6 centimeter. This is the only thing you have to write here and submit along with your answer sheet. So basically, uh, practical, first there are two practicals. Each practical has seven mark each. Clear? 
first uh, practical when you complete that is seven mark next again next practical seven mark and for this activity it's around three mark okay activity will be given along with the question paper this is one activity and one more activity is there right that activity usually they give uh, like this in the question it will be given some electrical components are given for example a cell rheostat key ammeter ammeter voltmeter and a resistance and make a electrical circuit so ohms law circuit very easy just read the question connect here a cell and a key and a rheostat and you can anywhere you can connect this milliammeter or ammeter and a load resistance r and completed here you connect a voltmeter this is a second activity so any one activity only will be asked in the exam clear so like this you have to write that's it this is a second activity okay so first practical seven mark second practical again seven mark second experiment uh, first experiment seven mark second experiment seven mark this activity according to question one activity that is three mark then investigatory project that you should have signed just at the time of entering into physics lab it should be completed duly signed from your internal examiner there will be a teacher from your school will be internal examiner okay then uh, viva on experiments activity and project that carries 5 mark this project 3 mark okay investigative project 3 mark you record and uh, this one project should be completed and duly signed by the internal examiner that will be your teacher in in uh, in charge then just at the entry of the practical lab after submitting this to external examiner you have to start your experiment in between don't forget to attend the viva because you will be called by your roll number and name in between during the examination and you will have to go to external they will check around uh, viva throughout the experiment activity almost all uh, i mean syllabus it will cover because your practical is almost related to theory also see me interpret resistivity example some viva points i will tell you see from first uh, ohms law to determine the resistivity of a given wire there question state ohms law and what are the conditions to obey the ohms law what are the limitations of ohms law that means temperature varying ohms law will not be obeyed semiconductors ohms law are not obeyed so like that some situations they may ask you to explain then what is meant by resistivity what is conductivity if the temperature increases how does the resistivity change and temperature decreases what happened to resistivity what is relaxation time what are the geometrical factors affect the resistance and resistivity if two resistance connect in series what happen when they connect in parallel what happens in household circuits what are the uh, method of parallel connection or series connection these are the type of question asking from first chapter first experiment and even second experiment which one a meter bridge and in meter bridge there are some more question can be asked state kirchhoff law of current and uh, voltage loop rule okay does it obey law of conservation of energy and current rule obey law of conservation of charge right this is all they will ask which uh, i mean property is conserved in the case of current rule then which a uh, uh, property which quantity is conserved in uh, kirchhoff voltage loop rule so first case charge is conserved in current rule in voltage rule energy is conserved so kirchhoff's law can be asked what is the balancing condition of a meter bridge based on which this meter bridge is working that means we need some bridge right these are the type of question usually you get from this which one uh, electrical experiments then next comes about uh, focal length of the lens what are the different types of lenses convex lens and concave lens then image positions when object come closer how does image changes image moves away and object is placed at infinity where is the image what's the nature object is beyond to have what is the nature of the image and where is it obtained this kind of things and what is magnification clear uh, then uh, from there uh, chromatic aberration spherical aberration all these kind of question can be asked from this lens power reciprocal of the focal length what is the unit of power that is diopter then when two lenses combine okay and then uh, red light and white light entering into the lens which has more focal length clear or which has more power when it is immersing in water or a liquid what happens to 
focal length of the lens or this theoretical questions can be asked connected to this lens you got, got an idea approximately then uh, which chapter comes galvanometer how can you convert a galvanometer into a meter how can you convert a galvanometer into voltmeter what is figure of merit and how can you increase the sensitivity of galvanometer what is the use of soft iron in galvanometer what is the meaning of radial magnetic field and what is the formula for torque acting on a dipole when a conductor is placed current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field what is the force acting onto it lorentz magnetic force charge entering into a magnetic field in the direction parallel to the field what will be the force acting anti parallel 90 degree why it is entering 90 degree what is the trajectory these kind of questions can be asked from that chapter moving called gal this galvanometer okay next come uh, after galvanometer next one pn junction diode clear what is the p type junction p type uh, silicon n type silicon what is doping uh, how what is an intrinsic semiconductor an extrinsic semiconductor how can you increase the conductivity of intrinsic semiconductor how a pn junction is formed what is meant by a rectifier how many rectifiers are there half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier what is the frequency of the output with respect to input in a half wave rectifier and frequency of output and input in a full wave rectifier okay so these are the type of question usually you get from this chapters okay i think you have got an idea about why your questions clear these are the common question usually the teachers ask then anywhere they can ask then interference diffraction everything they can ask but based on practical mainly these are the question and when you submit the project based on that also they will ask the question okay so that's it thank you wish you all the best okay.